Hey everybody, it is Daddy here with Dad and Kiddos. Today, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be opening a couple Magic the Gathering card boxes. Now, I played Magic years ago, back when I was in high school. So we're talking early high school. I stopped playing maybe halfway through. So, I mean, this is upwards of almost 20 years. So you can see how long I've been out of it. But getting back into card uh, games recently with the kids, um, it kind of reignited my interest in uh, Magic, and I've been playing the mobile game a little bit, so I figured, you know, why don't I pick up a couple more uh, boxes of cards, decks of cards, so I can start playing again. Now, I don't remember which cards are good. I, again, it's been so long that all of this is, it's almost new to me. Um, again, so it, it's really exciting to kind of get back into it. So I picked up a couple of these packs yesterday. Um, this right here, this is just a uh, Elves versus Inventors box set. What it comes with is two decks that you're able to use kind of right off the bat to get going. I figured I would use some pre-configured decks because, hey, I don't have all the knowledge of the cards at this point because it has been so long. And this will kind of help, you know, kickstart me back into the game. So what we'll do is we'll open this in a minute, but I also bought this gift pack just because it kind of looked pretty neat. It, it's got, it's got a, oops, a bunch of stuff in here, including a poster. Uh, you know, we've got a few booster packs, some premium creature cards, and five pre premium lands, which should just be a good time. And I like how they call their spin down life counter a spin down life counter instead of just a d20, which is really what it is. Um, all right, so let's get started. What I'll do is I'll open the, the packs first. <clears throat> and let's see what we got in here. All right. Um, let me open it from here. I'm gonna try to keep this all centered up nicely. So we keep everything in view. All right, so let's see what we got. Oh, all right, I forgot this also comes with a, uh, a couple, what do they call them again? Spin down life counters, right, D20s. Um, and I think the only real change that they make here is with their D20s, as you can see under here. The 20 is this, you know, kind of magic logo there. It's kind of cool. There's a red one and a white one in this case, one for the green deck, one for the red deck. That's nice to get started with for people to count their life. Um, oh, look at that. I think it comes with a couple boxes too. Quick reference guide, which I will be <laughs> taking advantage of, trust me. <laughs> uh, this is kind of nice. A couple deck boxes. They, they're flat packed within the uh, the box. You, you know, just open them up, collapse them together, put the deck in there, carry it around. It's got some space for some extra cards if you can see there, so you can build up the deck. <clears throat> All right, let's see. On top of the red deck here, we got a goblin welder. This is a goblin, goblin artificer uh, creature. And let's see, I'll, I'll kind of quickly go through the decks because I know that these are full decks and they could be quite uh, packed. Let's see what we got in here. Throw that to the side. All right, so for the red deck, aside from the Goblin Artificer, we got Pia and Kiran Nalaar, if I pronounced that right. A couple of those. Dark Steel Plate. So again, this is, I think this would probably be a pretty standard deck where you're getting out of this pack. So if you were to get one, you probably get the same cards that I have. I don't know if they'd be very much or randomized. A Mer Battle Sphere, Scuttling Doom Engine, Solemn Simulacrum. Again, I'm gonna go through these kind of quick because of just the number of cards we have here. A Thopter Assembly, which is just a great word. Temple Epiphany, I do like these dual color cards. Um, again, I don't remember if 20 years ago or so, I know that they had cards that would require multiple colors of mana, which this isn't required to cast, um, but I hadn't seen them at least, uh, you know, colored this way where you could see both on the same card. That That is nice. Another one here that's two colors, uh, Shivan Reef, Ethereum Sculptor, a Gearper, Gearcrafter, Fairy Mechanist, two of those, Trinket Mage, Riddle Smith, Treasure Mage, Trophy Mage, Whirler Rogue. That's kind of nice. Ethereum Sculptor, Barrage Ogre, a Maverick Thopterist, Reclusive Artificer, Ecor Wellspring. I hope I spelled pronounced that right. 
Inventor's goggles. Love the uh, steampunk look to those guys. Wow. Mycosynth Wellspring. Mere Sire. Nurok Replica. A Pyrite Spellbomb. Filigree Familiar. Two of those. Voyager Staff. And then a bunch of mana. Which I believe that that's probably... Uh, oh, nope, okay. So we got a whole chunk of mana here in the middle. A bunch of islands and mountains. You get a red and blue deck. Uh, Great Furnace. Seat of Synod. Swiftwater Cliffs. Two of those. Dark Steel Citadel. Foundry of the Councils. Phyrexia's Core, Artificer's Epiphany, Galvanic Blast, two of those, Welding Sparks, Shrapnel Blast. Now these are new, these artifact creatures to me. Again, to me. They could be familiar to you guys who play Magic, but I haven't, I've been out of it long enough to where I hadn't seen these before. So you get these, you know, non-colored as far as, uh, you know, doesn't resemble at least a blue or a, uh, a red, you know, card, as it were. Um, so you got these artifacts, right? So uh, you get two Thopter. Oh, well, they're all Thopters. Okay. So they're flying token artifact creatures. I'm going to learn what these do. I don't know what these do yet. I'm excited to find out. I, I really like that the game has changed, which I guess I would expect over this many years. Um, but it still feels familiar enough to where I'm not too intimidated to get back into it. So that is the first deck. That's the red and blue deck, it appears. Um, Anyone out there who plays, let me know what you think of these cards as I go through them. That includes the next deck and the booster box because, again, I've been out of it. You can tell me what's good, what's not, what's exciting, what I should be aware of as far as these new features go. And uh, let's go into the next deck. So this is the second deck that comes with that Elves versus Inventors box. This would be the Elves side, I believe, which looks like it's at least green. So we got Azuri Renegade Leader. He is the kind of special, what do they call this guy? Um, well, he's the, the primary card on the deck, let's put it that way. He's a bit hollow, as you can kind of see in the, uh, in the video here. Looks nice, should be fun. Let's see what we get in the rest of this deck. Yeah, we got some top-down lighting there, so apologies for the glare, but you get the idea. All right, so the second deck, the Elves deck in the Elves versus Inventors box. See, we got Dwyan, Guiltleaf, Dane, Elvish, Arch Druid, Gladeheart, Cavalry, Regal Force, Sylvan Advocate, two of those, Talara's Battalion, Yeva, Nature's Herald, Oren Reef, The Vastwood, Elvish Aberration, Elvish Branchbender, Fierce Empath, Elvish Mystic, two of those, Elvish Vanguard, Azuri's Archers, Two of those. An Elvish Branch Bender. Ivy Lane Denizen. Two of those. Croson Tusker. Kujar Seed Sculptor. Leaf Gilder. Two of those. Lanawar Empath. Wildheart Invoker. Dwinan's Elite. Two of those. Jagged Scar Archers. Viridian Shaman. We're into our mana again. Forest, forest, forests. This looks like a straight green deck as far as mana is concerned. Tranquil Thicket, and I guess the fact that it's a straight green deck almost fits with the, uh, the stereotype of elves, doesn't it? Um, Treetop Village, you get two of those. Lead the Stampede, Naturalize. I hope that's lead, not lead, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it's lead. Nature's Way, uh, Nisa's Judgment. And now we're on to Artifact Preachers again. Again, these are new to me. These are all Mir. Um, and you get a token creature here, an Elf Warrior. Another thing new to me. So these are going to be interesting to learn what they do and how they affect the game. So this is your second deck. So these, let me fold these up really quick. Uh, these boxes so I can kind of pop the decks into there for safekeeping for now. Before I uh, move on to that booster box. So these are the two decks that come with the Elves vs. Inventors uh, Magic Starter Box. Again, they each have their own little D20 life counter, which is nice. These little pack boxes. Kind of nice, that's the Elves one. Uh, let's see if the other one looks different. Oh, it does. Look at that, I happened to put them in the right box. We've got the other one here. 
So you can take these, you can hop back into the game or hop into the game for the first time. Like um, it almost feels in some weird ways like I'm doing. Uh, and you can really get going. So I'm looking forward to that. We'll be playing. I'll be posting updates as we go through kind of with my feelings about the, the game, coming back into it, what the kids might think of it and such. And, uh, oh, this is neat too. I just noticed that. See the reference for the type of uh, type of deck this is? This is a, a green deck with the forests. This one has the the water and the fire for the red and blue deck. Um, again, yeah, let me know what you think of those decks, those, uh, the cards, the artifacts, things like that. Um, again, a really nice box to get started with. I think it was only about 20 bucks, which really isn't bad in the magic world as far as I remember. One of the reasons why I got out of the game was because while well, I was young, I didn't have any money. So it was hard to kind of keep up with uh, players that are more competitive. So once again, let me know what you think and I'm excited to get back into it. Next, we'll get into the this gift pack booster box. So this has a bunch of stuff again, which we're gonna check out. Let's see what's in here. And again, as I go through these, I don't even know which cards are great or which ones aren't. I can tell you which ones I think will look neat. <laughs> That's about it. So I'm uh, again looking forward to some feedback here. See what people have as far as your input as into the you know, what cards are more rare, which things I should look out for and such as I continue my re-entry into the world of Magic the Gathering. It does come with this nice, let's see, it says eight and a half by 13 inch poster. That is really nice. And it's a thicker kind of card, you know, like a light cardboard, heavy paper type of material. So it's a little bit better than just your plain uh, paper poster. That, that is pretty cool. I may have to get a little frame for that and pop it on my wall. All right, let's crack this open. Let's see what we get. Got another D20 spin down. I picked this box out. They had a number of them when I picked them out or picked this up. And the reason why I got this one is because I like the look of this D20. I kind of like the gray and the black coloring. Um, there you go, I got a 16. Um, good stuff. Let's see what we got here. Now these on the outside must be the two premium creature cards up here. Pop this one out first. It's really set into the packaging here, so I gotta be careful with it. Here we go. So Kari Zev Skyship Raider. She looks pretty rad. Legendary creature, she's a human pirate. One three, uh, I'm not going to read her abilities here, but you can see, I hope in the video that she is also hollow and Again, a good red creature may have to add that to the red deck that I just showed you guys in the starter deck. On the other side, we have a Metalwork Colossus, which is also hollow. Seems pretty strong as far as I'm aware, 10 10. Um, and again, he may be able to be added to either one of the decks or another deck that I build over time. Here is one of the premium lands, and I think what makes them really premium is the fact that they're hollow. I mean, you know, it is a swamp like any other black swamp would be, but that's got a really nice hollow to it. These cards feel good. And, uh, oh, maybe, maybe these are, okay, yep. Looking at them now, the other, the remaining premium lands are also hollow. An island hollow, plains, here's your forest, and your mountain. Very nice. All right, we've got a few booster packs here included with that starter, um, the gift pack. A uh, um, Amonkhet booster pack, Our Devastation, and Ixalan. Hope I pronounced that right for all you magic folks out there. I didn't butcher it too bad for you. All right, so I'm gonna start with the Ixalan, if only because I may be pronouncing it wrong. And let's see what we got. Ah, right on the, the top here is a expand your arsenal of magic knowledge. So I don't know exactly what this card is for, except for the fact that, uh, cause I'm not sure, I guess I would have to throw this into a um, deck protector type uh, sleeve in order to use it. I mean, I don't know if this is, this looks like a token creature. So again, I'm not as familiar with those as many of you might be. I don't see any casting costs up there or mana cost to use it, but I'm, 
assume that they're used differently. But since the back is different, that's interesting to me. That it looks like it's trying to send you to the website to learn more about the game. But it looks like a normal card on the other side. So I'm assuming I can use it, but I'd have to get something along the lines of a sleeve with a, you know, a opaque back to use it. But still, it's a dinosaur. I'm happy about it. Who doesn't like dinosaurs? Let's see what else we got here. A skittering heart stopper, which looks absolutely terrifying. I'm not a fan of millipedes or centipedes. So that's awful, but pretty cool card. A dual shot. A slash of talons. Really neat looking cards out of this set. Mark of the Vampire. Prosperous Pirates. As any pirate would want to be. Deep Proof Warrior. Cancel. A Water Tap Weaver. A Hijack. Uh, let's see. A Pious Interdiction. Sheltering Light. Favorable Winds. Bishop of the Bloodstained. What a title that is. Angrath's Marauders, and a plane. The end. So that was your Zalan booster pack right there. Move that to the side. We'll go. Sorry about that glitch there for a second, but here we are. We're going to move on to the Hour of Devastation booster pack. Aha, uh -huh, look at this. Top card in this case. Looks like we got some a little pop-out pieces here. If you can see in the video, see how it's perforated. So you can remove all these little markers and such, which must be another part of the game that's been added. There's a lot that I'm going to have to relearn, which is exciting. So these must be markers. So there's exerted, external, then exerted, and then a couple of these minus one, minus one markers, and I don't know what those are, blocks or bricks or something. So these must affect the cards in some way as you use them, maybe part of this expansion. So that should be neat. Let's see what we got as far as cards go. A Dauntless Aven, Firebrand Archer, Aerial Guide, Rampaging Hippo. Never ever fun. A Carrion Screecher, Oketra's Avenger, Gift of Strength, Crash Through. That's kind of nice. All the creatures you control gain trample until the end of the turn. Strategic Planning, Wall of Forgotten Pharaohs, neat. Bloodwater Entity, a Sifter Worm, a Sand Strangler, a Ramunap Hydra, and your planes. There's your land on top of that. So again, that's your Hour of Devastation pack out of the gift set. These really intrigue me. Curious to find out what they do. If you do know and you comment quick, maybe you can be the one who tells me first. Let's see what we get in that final pack. All right. This is the Amonkhet booster pack. Let's see what we got in here. Hey, look at this. Similar to the Hour of Devastation pack, you have some uh, embalmed now. Exerted and embalmed, and then the same kind of markers at the bottom, just different color. See the two. Interesting stuff, everybody. All right, let me just do the land first. I'm sure it's down there. Yep, here's your forest. I like that because it looks like a desert kind of oasis forest, which may kind of go with the whole Egyptian theme of this expansion. All right, first one, Mighty Leap. It looks almost Assassin's Creed-ish. That's kind of cool. Ancient Crab. Get a desert Sorodin, Corodin, I think I said that right. Uh, Initiate's Companion, a Pitiless Vizier, Cartouche of Ambition, Shimmer Scale Drake, love that, Cradle of the Accursed, Oashra Cultivator, hmm, Electrify, I really do like the art in this expansion so far. That Egyptian art looks really nice. Zenith Seeker, very cool. Forgetting all these. Synchronized Strike, On Crop Champion, and an Archfiend of Ifnir. Very cool. So, that again is your Almonquette expansion booster pack out of the gift box.
or the gift pack. All right. Here you go. So that's it, everybody. That's my first set of kind of cards that I picked up to get back into magic after all these years. Some new things I'm going to have to learn as far as these, uh, you know, these kind of token cards go. I don't know what that's all about. I don't know what those artifacts and artifact creatures are all about, but I'm excited to figure it out. I'm excited to get back into the game. Let me know what you think of what I've picked up here. Let me know if there's anything else that I, I should grab or I should be looking for as I get back into the game after so many years. And make sure, again, to uh, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, really, that helps us out. That gets the word out about what we've been doing. Check out our streams when we do them. We do do them over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash dadandkiddos. A look at us there. We'll try to send those streams over to YouTube, too, if you can only use YouTube and you can watch us go there. And hope to see you guys soon.